All right, folks, just a real quick one here. We built uh, two new bioreactors for composting at the workshop. Uh, we built these on Saturday. It's now Monday morning. Uh, you can probably see little wafts of steam. The ground temperature right now, I'm taking my thermal gun, it's about 65. It's probably about the air temperature. I'm in shorts, I'm pretty comfortable, just a bit chilly in the shade. Um, I wanted to show you in only two days, we're sitting right at 160, which just seems always to be what happens with these guys. They get up to about 160 degrees. You go much higher than that, you have to turn it. I never turn it. If I do see it get a little bit higher than 160, uh, all I do is hit it with the garden hose and that actually brings the temperature down and kind of resets everything. I've never actually had to do it more than one time and I've made dozens of these now. Um, now, one thing I'll tell you is I, I, you know, when I watch these, I always think if somebody wanted to heat a greenhouse, what a great way to go. If you had a big greenhouse with an open center, you could literally just build one of these about every three weeks to four weeks. Uh, they are going to wane in their temperature over that period of time, but they, they kick off really, really quick. You just have to keep uh, your compost material separated and dry until you built the bioreactor. Uh, but, you know, one every three weeks through your winter, and you could grow in a greenhouse all winter heated by nothing but these with nothing sophisticated. If you didn't have room in the greenhouse, you could easily set up some stuff where you plumb from the pipes as they off gas into the greenhouse. That would probably work close to just as good because they are putting off a great amount of heat. Now, I will tell you right now, this is hot. It's not 100 or 160 degrees hot. I felt it and thought, you know, it's probably about 100, 110 degrees. I thought, well, dummy, you have one of these. Why don't you check for yourself? And uh, that one's 90. I got to look where I'm pointing, I guess. 95 degrees, so I was close. Um, 105 degrees. You know, so you're putting off, and they will be different temperatures. Like if I get this one, again, I got to actually get in the pipe. Uh, 98 degrees is what it said. Now it's 93 when I moved it. Um, that one's 92. So you're looking at 90 to 100 degree air coming up out of those pipes. Zero energy input, right? Like it's just heat. You could put coils inside them and pump water through it, but you've got that warm air coming out. And uh, now the coop looks all nice and clean. This is where all the material came from. And it's straw and a variety of other things that we won't get into today. But the birds have nice clean new digs. One thing we, I will tell you is that pit right there is where we put all our kitchen scraps and I feed the ducks everything that comes out of the aquatic system. And as you did notice, they are covered with a cap of wood chips. I do this instead of a tarp. I think it's more natural and these wood chips are very old. They've been in my field a long time. They're already like halfway broken down and they smell of mushrooms. So as soon as this stops cooking, what will happen is these will begin to inoculate fungus down into the system and the fungal flushes that come out of these is pretty amazing. They are as simple as they look. Don't be intimidated by it. And uh, one cool thing is the center pipe, those little cheap plastic sprinklers, that's a four inch pipe. They fit perfectly on there. As we move forward and they need watering, that's how I actually provide moisture to them. More on that will come later. Take care guys, just wanted to catch you up on how quick this stuff goes. Oh, and by the way, <clears throat> it was up to 130 degrees yesterday morning only about 20 hours after we set them up. So like I'm saying, these things kick off fast when you build them this way.